to Mr. Upton, Summer Street, in the year of our Lord, 1810. Mr. Upton, it is with great joy that I receive the news of your return to Chatsford Manor. The cold bite of winter has softened considerably, and your ailing mother should find the climate quite restorative. Yours sincerely, Miss Ashford. To Miss Ashford, Idlewood Lane, in the year of our Lord, 1810. Miss Ashford, I am in gratitude to you for your kind words. <clears throat> the roads are particularly treacherous this time of year, so I fear the journey will be unpleasant. However, the promise of your company gives me the strength to overcome any obstacle. Yours sincerely, Mr. Upton. Mr. Upton, you unduly flatter me, for I am a simple teacher's daughter, plain in face and no richer than such. Yours sincerely, Miss Ashford. Miss Ashford, you are not plain to me, but the most beautiful of angels. I would be a wretched man if I did not confess that my feelings for you have transfigured into... into love. I love you, Amelia. I love you. Dearest Charles, I love you too. Now I hope that when we reunite, you will sit with me in your mother's garden so that I may see your radiance in all of nature's glory. And let me plunder your down under. <laughs> <laughs> a bluebird has alighted on my windowsill and regards me as if it too rejoices in our love. The ancient Greeks, who wrote so eloquently, could not adequately convey my feelings for you. But on another note, sodomy is all the rage in London. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Charles, I have such news. Cupid's arrow has pierced two more hearts. Miss Abernathy and Mr. Bishop are engaged to be married. They are a suitable match, Mother says. And Miss Abernathy will benefit substantially from Mr. Bishop's fortune. Your mother is quite correct. They are well suited for each other. But what truly concerns me is whether I'll ever get to put the junk in your trunk. <laughs> <laughs> I promise that I'll be gentle. I just really want to get up in there. <laughs> I spoke too soon. Miss Abernathy was spotted walking unchaperoned with a strange man. What will become of poor Mr. Bishop, I do not know. But it is sure that the wedding is called off. His heart must break. Yeah, terrible. Please, Amelia, just once. Then I'll never bug her. Bug you again. <laughs> the alarm is false. The stranger, it seems, is Miss Abernathy's uncle, recently return, returned from a sea voyage. Well, what a coincidence. I'm about to embark on a sea voyage presently. A long, dangerous sea voyage to the dark caves betwixt the plump rump mountains. <laughs> and I may not return alive. <coughs> so you should probably let me slip through the back door. Dearest Charles, if you were to perish in the waves, I will forever wear black, for I will be a widow in soul, if not yet marriage. Okay, how are you not getting the hint? Is it me? Am I being too subtle? Uh, hello, McFly, are you in there? <laughs> I want to bang on your ribs here up at Doggy Dog. <laughs> oh, silly me. But you must first ask my father's permission before we engage in anal sex. Oh. <laughs> he is most agreeable in the morning, after his breakfast opium. <laughs> Then I shall write to him presently, my fairest. <laughs> Good night, sweet, sweet flower. I put my muse to bed to await the morrow. And so concludes another episode of Pride and Sensibility. <laughs> Miss Ashford has at last found a suitor who appreciates her strength of character. While Mr. Upton has finally met the woman with whom he can match wits. It appears Mr. Upton has one remaining challenge to wit. Obtaining Miss Ashford's father's permission for butt sex. Not to worry, I wouldn't be surprised if he were soon infiltrating that cinnamon ring because Mr. Upton is just that smooth. Join us next week on Masterpiece Theatre, Too Hot for Public Funding, 
when we present to you a controversial Bronte three-way. Until then, good night.